Hello everyone, welcome back to another scholarship opportunity. Today we are looking at the Master's Excellence Fellowships at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne, Switzerland. So we are currently on the official uh, page of the scholarship program. So the link to all, all the links to all the information we are presenting here, you will find those links in the video description below. And this is where you start. You want to start with the preliminary information about the scholarship, what it offers, the eligibility criteria, and how to apply. So all this information, we are going to see it from here. So a little bit of detail, like it says here, that in order to reward the most outstanding students, who are beginning their master's studies, EPFL, that is the short for uh, Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Luzon, um, is offering or offers a limited number of excellence fellowships. Uh, along with this, you are guaranteed housing during the whole duration of the fellowship. And the fellowships are dedicated to candidates who have achieved remarkable academic results. So. Like it says here, these are fellowships that are dedicated to students who are starting their master's studies. So you've completed your bachelor's degree, you are planning or you are studying your master's studies or you're planning to apply for your master's studies, then you are eligible for this uh, opportunity. They mentioned here housing, but we shall see the rest of the benefits that this program offers. So from here, we can see a little bit of information regarding what the program offers. So like it says here, these fellowships are worth 10,000 Swiss francs per semester. So if you want to do a rough conversion, just know that 10,000 Swiss francs is approximately 10,000 euros. So you can do that rough estimation of equivalence there. And this is offered per semester. So if the master's program is for four years, then you will get 10,000 Swiss francs Per semester for four semesters and then again emphasis is that uh, the scholarships are available to students who have obtained their bachelor's degree you might have obtained your bachelor's degree from epfl or from any other university so it's not limited to which university you have obtained your degree from any university from any country around the world it doesn't matter they talk about the objective of the scholarship here Call it fellowship, call it fellowship. And they say the objective is to allow students to concentrate on their master's studies while having the opportunity to undergo various or to undertake various activities likely to enrich their professional background and develop cross disciplinary skills. So that is kind of the objective of this fellowship. Again, complete a bachelor's degree, you have excellent grades, you're applying for master's program at EPFL, then you can apply for this opportunity. Now we can see a little bit of overview of how the application works. So first of all, in order to apply for the program, you first must have identified your preferred master's program you want to apply for at EPFL. And it says here that interested students must check the corresponding box on their master's application form and provide the requested application file. So during the process of applying for your master's program at EPFL, you will have the opportunity to express your interest in this opportunity as well. So during the application, there is a box you must tick to show that you are interested in this uh, program as well. And then uh, in addition to that, you must provide a requested requested application file. So that is kind of how the uh, application process works. We shall see how we can do that practically. And then internal candidates or candidates that are already studying at EPFL, wishing to continue in the same field of study, will submit the application directly to their section. So that is for internal candidates, but for foreign students, students coming from other universities and things of the kind, you must apply for a master's a program and during the application for admission then you will have the opportunity to tick a box 
to show that you wish to be considered for this program. So another critical information here, students who have better chances of being selected for this program are those students who have some experience. It's not mandatory, it's not a requirement, but it gives you some more advantage. So if you have some experience in various areas such as research, you've done some publications, you've um, earned some prizes or fellowship before or during your bachelor's degree, you have some entrepreneurship um, experience, and then you have a social or societal commitment. So you've been engaged in civil activities, associative, you've uh, participated in organizing events and things of the kind. So if you have some background of activity are along these areas, then your chances of being selected are really uh, good. So you have some research background, you've done some, you've participated in some competitions and surprises, you've participated in some internships, fellowships, you've um, been part of, for example, a startup that has uh, created some um, innovative ideas. So you've been really active and you have evidence of this, then your chances are really, really good. But it's, this is, it's not limited to this. It's not a mandat mandatory thing that you must have, but it shows you that if you really have this kind of experience, then your chances are really, really good. And then also it's good to know that the fellowship is offered for the first year, and then it's renewed for the second year, provided that you meet certain criteria. So to be uh, offered the scholarship for the second year, you must obtain 50 credit units in your first year and have an overall average of five out of six. So I think that is a good uh, and easy condition to meet if you're really serious with your uh, studies. Uh, I don't think that is a barrier in any way. So we've seen some general information on what the scholarship offers, who it is dedicated to, and what you earn, or what the benefits of the scholarship, or what it, uh, like the value of the stipend there, we've seen it. We've also seen how the, an overview of how the uh, application works and then other information here. Now you can see the eligibility criteria that you must meet in order to apply for this scholarship. And for that, if you scroll up on this page, there is uh, this, um, actually we can see it from down here. At the very bottom is this eligibility and application. If you click on that, it will take you to this uh, page here that you're seeing. And down here we have the eligibility conditions for this uh, scholarship. So you want to read that. You want to make sure that you meet these uh, conditions that are set. We've seen some of them, but this is like the detailed uh, information about uh, the eligibility criteria. So first of all, you must be applying for a master's program at EPFL, like we've said already. So as long as you meet the eligibility criteria for a master's program at EPFL, then you'll most certainly meet the eligibility criteria for uh, the program. So that is really easy. As long as you meet the eligibility criteria for a master's program at EPFL, then you, you meet, you automatically meet the eligibility criteria for the program. And here they say limited number of uh, fellowships are awarded to the most deserving candidates. And this is based on academic excellence, qualification, and motivation. So this is the criteria that they follow when they are awarding this uh, program. First of all, you have excellence academic uh, record and then your motivation as well is really convincing so that that was easy and then we've seen we can see a little bit more of the coverage like we said 10,000 Swiss francs per semester that is for four semesters so master's program at, programs at EPFL are four semesters so additional benefits like we say we saw earlier on is you get a reservation of a student's room in a student's residence. So that is on top of the 10,000 Swiss francs. And also you will get a certificate of excellence upon completion of your master's program. Really good stuff. Again, more about selection. You can read more about it here and then renew. And then you, if you have some other questions, you can read this fax. You can visit this fax page and then you can, um, and you can get answers to some of the most are pressing questions. For example, if you're thinking, okay, what's the minimum GPA that they would accept for this program? There is already an answer for that. So is there minimum GPA required? And then here they say no. 
there is no minimum GPA so you just need to provide proof that you have academic uh, good or excellent academic record and then other uh, questions again read this uh, fax page and then you'll get most of the answers that you might have uh, answers to questions that you might have had but let's dive right away into the application process and see how that one would work so the application process is uh, divided into two categories one is for external candidates that is students from other universities in other countries and then the other one is for internal candidates that is students that are uh, who have been studying or who have obtained their bachelor's degree at EPFL. So we are going to concentrate, concentrate on this, the one for international students. Then when you click there, you'll see that uh, the application should be submitted via the EPFL online master's application. So like we said, first of all, you identify the program that you want to apply for. You apply for that program and during the application process, then you will have a chance to uh, express the, your interest in being selected for the program. So that is kind of the uh, procedure there. So there is no uh, separate um, application file or, or procedure for the scholarship. It's combined into, or it's combined with the uh, application for admission. Also the academic uh, documents that you submit during your master's uh, during the application for your master's program are uh, sufficient. So there is no additional documents that you'll need. But first, let's start right away. Number one, identify a master's program. Then number two, we shall initiate application for the program. And then number three, we shall uh, indicate that we want to be uh, considered for this uh, program. So very first, let's look at uh, the master's program that are available. You can click on this link here and it will open here in a new uh, page. And we can uh, see some information here about what you need to know, which documents you must have when applying for a master's uh, program at EPFL. And here we are gonna go, first of all, on over the main or the most important things. Uh, the application is entirely online, so make sure you've scanned all your documents because there is no uh, physical documents required in this uh, process. The other thing is you will need to submit some reference letters, and these reference letters are submitted by the reference themselves. So keep that in mind. Reference letters, we shall see how many you need or what nature they are. But these are submitted by the reference themselves. They will provide for you email an email address or you will provide for them. We shall see the process, how it works. But just know, referees will submit letters themselves on your behalf. And the other thing is uh, the deadline. For this year, the deadline is December 15th. And then for next year, it will be March 31st. So there are two uh, deadlines for, for admission. And then here we can see a list of documents that you need. Documents must be in English, French, German, or Italian. If your documents, if your academic documents are not in any of these languages, then you must uh, do a, a legalized translation of all documents and then in one of these languages and then submit those. So you will need a CV. You will need a copy of all your university degrees, trans transcripts and records as well. A statement of purpose, we shall see how you can write this. And then contact details of theory. So they need theory academic referees. So here they need only contact details, meaning that they, you submit contact details of this referees and then the university will request this referees for uh, recommendation letters on your behalf. So you don't have to submit the recommendation letters yourself. You just submit the details of this uh, academic referees and then they will submit uh, the recommendation letters on your behalf. And then your ID or passport. So again, CV, university degrees and transcripts of records, statement of purpose, this is uh, written by you, yourself, and then contacts of theory academic referees, and then ID or passport. So if you have uh, other documents like uh, English language proficiency, uh, certificates, uh, you can submit those as well. They are not required, but they 
can increase your chance of being selected. Um, great scores, for example, uh, research publications, uh, portfolios from your previous work, you can submit these as well. They're not compulsory, but just to boost your chances of being selected, you can attach those as well. These are the main ones here that we've seen here. These are the most important ones. We've talked about re recommendation letters. We don't need to, you can read most of the information here again. Statement of purpose. This is what I wanted to emphasize a little bit. So a statement of purpose is uh, a 1,000, max 1,000 word document where you describe your academic background and your career strategies or strategy. So here you describe your academic background. What have you been studying? Where you've been studying? What achievements you've had? Uh, prizes you've earned? Uh, fellowships you've earned? Uh, competitions you've attended? Everything up to this stage here today. It's free. Uh, you, you can use any format you want as long as it describes exactly this. So your academic, academic background up to this stage today and then what is your career strategy? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do after your master's studies? What do you want to do in, during your master's studies? What do you want to achieve? What career path do you want to take? You know, things of the kind. Do you want to dive into a research? Um, or do you want to take a research best direction? Do you want to do a PhD? Do you want to start up? company what do you want to do what is what are you looking for the future so this this is what you describe here so it's really that simple academic background where you've been and then career strategy where you want to go and then on top of that you must pay an application fee the application fee is 150 swiss francs for students who obtain their bachelor's degree in a foreign university and then 50 swiss francs for students who obtained their bachelor's degree at a Swiss university. So 100 Swiss, Swiss francs, that's roughly 100 euros again. Um, and then that, that's it, basically. So simple summary of the information we've seen on this page, how to prepare your application. We've seen that here. We've seen required documents, recommendation letters by your reference, statement of purpose, then application fee. Then you can read the rest of the, the, the information. Just know that this year's deadline is December 15th, and then next year's deadline is uh, March 31st. So choose which period you want to apply in accordingly. Now, if we go back to the previous page where we were here, you can navigate, as you can see here from this, you can navigate uh, among different pages so we started from this page here, you can see, Master's Excellence Fellowships. This is where we saw all the information about the fellowship. So that is the uh, main page of uh, the program there. And then we saw the application and deadlines from here. But you can see navigate, go back here. So I wanted us to go back here to the main page because I want us to look at um, the available master's programs because you have to choose your master's program and then apply for it. So when you scroll down to the very bottom, you can see your master's programs and it says EPFL offers 29 master's programs distributed among five faculties. So if you click on this um, master's program link here, you will uh, reach this page here where you have all the master's uh, programs like they've said there. And then you can choose your program accordingly. So you can choose based on, uh, on faculty. So you have the faculty or School of Architecture, Civil and Environmental Engineering. You have School of Engineering there, School of Computer Science and School of Computer and Communication Sciences, School of Basic Sciences, School of Life Sciences, and then College of Management and Technology, or we still have also College of Humanities, and then Cross School Master's Programs. So browse through all these programs, choose a program that you want, you feel you want to apply for, and then let's start with the application. So you can click on the program first to know what the program entails and go through the various uh, information about the program, the curriculum, the requirements and everything. So for example, here, if you choose robotics, you can click on that. And then here you get all the program specific information, what you will study, what 
uh, motivation and, and cu curriculum. For example, here you have simplified study plan, things of the kind. So you, you, you will go through all the uh, information about this uh, program. Then after you've read through the program and uh, established that you want to apply for this particular program, then you can click on the online application link here. So it's right here inside the uh, program page. So you can come here and say, uh, apply online, just like that. Then it will take you to the other page that we were, remember, where we saw all this information about uh, the application and everything right there and then you want to click on this link here registration form to be completed paid for and submitted on march 31st at latest so remember we said there are two deadlines uh, one is december 15th and one is uh, march 31st so you choose this is the latest is march 31st so click on that and then you will land on this page here so this page says master and then online application form there uh, it's in uh, two, two languages, French and English, so you can switch between the two. So we shall use English here. And then the first thing you want to do is, so they will tell you here, welcome to EPFL Master's online application. All materials that you submit on this website will be treated. So some, just to give you the preliminary information. Then here they say you can complete the form during one session or sign in again to finish it. So you can, you can complete the form of a duration of time so you can complete a little bit sign out come back later sign in again do some more sign out sign in again do some more uh, until you finally complete the application but the very first thing you want to do is uh, to apply or uh, rather register for um create your, your account so we shall say come here and say create your personal account you click ok on that so they need first of all your email address so you enter the email address Then create a password. Repeat your password here. And then click OK. Remember, uh, your password must follow the minimum conditions here. So 12 characters contain, should contain um, a number from 0 to, to 9. Should contain an alphabet collator, uh, uppercase al alphabet collator. Should contain a lower case alphabet collator and then it should contain a special character as well so that is what the how the password that is a strong password that they are requesting here so let me see if mine meets the criteria and bank mine meets the criteria and then here they'll say any user account has been created on this email address and then you have successfully connected to the online application form. So now after creating the uh, account, now you can start uh, the application process. So you can see here new form. Now if you have any forms in progress, they will appear here. And then um, each, each of these uh, indicators here indicates the state or status of your application. So if it's in red here, it means that your application form has been created but can be changed. So if it turns to green, then that means you've submitted your application form and you cannot change it. Uh, blue means all your referees have submitted their recommendation letters. And then yellow here means that the register office is, office is dealing with your application form. So that is kind of status indicators there. But yeah, we don't have any application forms. We can create one, so you can come here and say create new. And then we can start filling in our information. So information is categorized in, well, the process is divided into eight steps here. The first one is where you fill in your personal information. Second one is where you fill in your study history. Third is your program selection. Fourth is the languages. Five is referees. Six is where you upload your documents. Seven is where you express your interest for the fellowship. And then eight is the validation part. We shall see what validation means. But let's start. So first is your family name. Uh, previous names, if you have any. Uh, first names first name, Se uh, sex or gender, date of birth. So date of birth is day, month, year. So day dot month dot year. Like that. And then here they want a copy of your passport. So you have, must upload a copy of your passport here. So you select a document. So 
so remember they advise you to scan all your documents and have them in one uh, f folder and then you can just select from there and then attach so select your uh, document there and attach it so this is copy of passport or id or both uh, here you fill in country of domicile and then current residence as well if the country of domicile is the same as your current residence you use this uh, link here to copy your information from here to here if it's different then the information can be different but let's first fill in country of domi domicile here so you fill in country there address Uh, so street there, whatever your address is, where you're living, it doesn't matter. Postcode, if any, you fill it in there. City, uh, county, and the telephone number there. And then email address is uh, there by, by default because we used it when we were registering. Now, if you want to copy all this information to current current residence if the uh, information is similar uh, if your information for do domicile is the same as information for current residence then the information is the same so you can use this link here and it will, it will copy all the information from the left to the right then you don't have to repeat it uh, again because you have it already here and it's the same information if it's different then you can type in uh, different information there accordingly but yeah that is done there we can now continue here, nationality, select your nationality there. If you are a Swiss national or Swiss citizen, do not, uh, do you, uh, sorry. If you are, if you're not a Swiss citizen, do you have a Swiss residence permit? So this is, ask, this asks you if you already have a Swiss residence permit. So click no, if, if it applies, if it does, then you click yes, and then you have to enter the number here. Country of birth, again, you enter that then marital status the number of children again if you have any disabilities and things of the kind you must read this uh, information here as well and then when you're done with this you can now click on save data on this page and then we can go to the next page studies now uh, under studies uh, first of all here we add the federal mat matricule this is for um, students who have studied before at a swiss higher education institute if you've not studied in switzerland before just skip this it doesn't apply to you and then here you um bachelor's you enter your bachelor's um studies information so you choose the level first bachelor there institution institution country where you did your bachelor's degree from in other words in that 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 in you choose the country so you see that when you select the country here where you did your bachelor's degree from then you can select the university from from the drop down here if i selected another country for example tanzania you will see that i can okay let's select zambia for example you'll see that i can select from the drop down so whichever country you enter in here to give you the uh, possibility of selecting universities from the drop drop down here so this is a very good thing so enter the country there and then select the, ins the institute or university from the drop down there and then you'll see that um, city also is complete, uh, entered automatically and then the uh, institution website there these are not correct you can correct them but uh, i believe they'll be correct field of study again you can select from the drop down here dates from when to when so again it's month a dot year sorry month year and then to when so that's how it's, it is so month again to year like that uh, this is the title of your uh, program so don't forget to, to put it in that the bachelor of computer science so that's the title of the program there a duration here in years so you put that in how long it took you 
the program take you. Then awarded date as well, month, year. A GPA, if available, it's not mandatory, remember, but it should be uh, given here. So GPA or other grade. If your grading is from on a scale of zero to 10, then you put in, you don't have to convert. So if you, your grade is GPA based, then you put in your GPA, for example, 3.45. And then the maximum grade here indicates out of five, for example. So your grading scale at university is zero to 10, then for example, you got an eight, and then out of 10, so this is the grade and then the maximum uh, grade from the grading scale. So that is how it works. Country of permanent residence, fill that in as well. And then permanent address at the time of opening. Again, you enter your permanent address. Like that. And then other university degrees, if you have other degrees, then you fill in this information as well here. Follow the same uh, procedures we did here. And then you can fill in as many as as you, you as possible there. If you are not currently studying, state what you've been doing since your last degree level study. So since you've graduated, what have you been doing? That is what they want to know here. Fill in that information here. If you have a list of books, articles, publications, co-authored uh, um, publications as well, or patents, you fill those in here. Also, you can fill in a, uh, a website where your publications can be viewed. This, this is not mandatory information. This is just extra information in case you do have that. If you have any list of honors, prizes, fellowships you've received before, also list those here. Again, it's not mandatory information. If you have it, you fill it in. If you don't have it, it's not required. Then here you can list a, a list of professional experiences. For example, if you've been working after during or after your uh, studies, your bachelor's degree studies, then you can also fill in that information here. So occupation, what you're working, your employer and location, and then from which date to which date. Again, this employment history is not mandatory. And then any other re relevant information here, you put that in here. But that is like extra information. This is the most important information. This increases your chance of being selected, but it's, it's not guaranteed. So, if you have it, please fill it in. If you don't have it, don't bother. Then we save and then we should go to the next page. Here on this page, we select the program that we want to apply for. And here under master program, you select the master program you're applying for. So we said we want to apply for robotics. Select that. Application date, or uh, rather application deadline is uh, December 15th. The deadline, the March 31st deadline will be for next year, but for this year, it's December 15th. You um, select that. If you are applying to other universities, apart from the EPFL, you should uh, fill that information here. If you're only applying to uh, EPFL, then leave this blank, it doesn't apply to you. Then where did you hear about EPFL, master's programs, you select where you, uh, you had this from. And then you save that as well. Then we go to languages here. So they say, what language would you like your incoming documents and communication to be in? So you select which language you're comfortable with. Either French or English, we leave it at English there. Then you select languages you know, written or oral, and then the level. So English, how best do you know English? Uh, so if it's your mother tongue, you click there, mother tongue. If it's not your mother tongue, then you select a different mother tongue. So first of all, select the, the level here of English proficiency. Uh, so you can sound very fluent in English. That is written and then oral, also fluent English. If you know some French as well, if it's your mother tongue, you select this mother tongue. If it's not, then you just select proficiency. It's either um, poor, fluent or none. So if it's none, you select none there. And then oral, also none. Then you can select any other uh, languages here. So for example, if you're from Kenya, you could, you could select Swahili. Then this is your mother tongue, so obviously select mother tongue, fluency in written, writing. Uh, oh, it's okay. When you select mother tongue, then you don't select, you have to select these other ones because mother tongue overrides those. So English is not your mother tongue, but you're fluent in written English and then fluent in oral English as well. French, none, and then Swahili is your mother tongue. And any other languages that are not listed, you can select any other languages. For example, if you know Arabic, then you can say um, fair, written and fair, oral. It works like that. 
the language of institution in primary school so which language did you study in in your primary school that is what they're asking for here if it's english then you select english in secondary school again same thing you select the language of instruction there english as well and then university as well you select language of instruction if it's english then you select english if it's not select any other languages so again we say if you have any english language certificates or grace scores, please put those in if you don't it is not uh, required it's not mandatory but if you do please put those they increase your chances of being selected so you can put in grades for TOEFL or gray here if you have any other certificates that are not mentioned here english language certificates for example ielts you can type them here for example i have ielts and then you can put in the grade there as well score so you can see 7.5 overall or you can mention the grades uh, for each section if you don't please don't put in because it's not uh, compulsory it's just extra information then after that you just click save and then we go to referees remember here we said three names of referees that will write letters on your behalf these referees will be contacted directly by the institution and they will be request they will request them uh, for this information so just put in title these academic referees so title for example professor professor uh, last name first name institution in the institution here where they are teaching or working and then the address of the referee put in their full address zip code again CT and then country county and then country where they are residing now very important is the email address because this is how they are going to be contacted if you don't provide their email address there is no way the university is going to be able to contact them and then if you're done with the first referee you go to the second referee third referee until you complete all the theory i'll use some of the information here because i want to complete this uh, form here so that we can go to the upload and then the rest of the pages so i can't go to the next pages if this one is not completed so i'll just reuse some of the information here this is just dumb dumb information um institution again i'll just copy from here I want to just complete these three sections with just the information and then we so that we can go to the next page again third referee there uh, professor like that copy this place it here so that we can go to the next page and see what we have there as well okay now i've filled in some dumb information this information should be i mean find three different referees fill in the information here and then after that you can click on this save data now after filling in that information there now we go to uh, uploading uh, additional documents so first is your university diploma upload that again here just choose file click on choose file and then browse to the folder where you have all your documents saved you select your attach transcripts of records if you have second diploma second transcript of record third diploma third transcript of records so if you have three degrees you, you select all those three if you have just one you need only this first two here the diploma and transcript of record and then here is um 
English language certificate if you have any of if you mentioned that you have any there if you don't don't upload grace calls here if you don't don't upload instead of statement of purpose at this stage you've written it you've saved it as well you select that and upload that as well your CV as well you've created a CV select upload and then any other documents as well you upload those which are not mandatory but you mention that you have those so the only documents that are mandatory here is your one diploma then one set of transcripts of records and then a statement of purpose we've seen that already and then your CV there you can save and then this is where the application for, for the scholarship now for the fellowship of uh, occurs after you've uh, done personal information studies program language referee and then uploaded all the documents now here is where you now use you express your interest into the program so all you have to do is to click this box here all right so you click this box that i request my application to be considered for the epfl excellence fellowship and after you've done that down here they'll ask if you uh, uh there, there's some more information you have to complete so they'll say you are eligible for epfl fellowship if you have excellent results in your studies prior to admission to the masters the number of scholarships available being limited they are awarded on a competitive basis it's the epfl excellence scholarship consists of financial package of 20,000 swiss francs per year that is 20, uh, 10 000 swiss francs per semester and a maximum of 40 000 swiss francs for the entire duration of the master's program so here you you have to answer a few questions have you been awarded a fellowship a scholarship or fellowship by a national international or private organization for the whole part of your studies at epfl so here click no and then here you have to click that you, you confirm that the information you've given is true here and then you uh, authorize epfl to verify your information there and then that's it basically and then you click save again and then this this is the validation part so in order so they say yeah your online application is now complete if you have any more changes to add if you have no more changes to add so if you want to add some more information please don't validate you can sign out sign in back later and then uh, complete your information but if you've completed everything then you can now validate if you have any comments please mention them below these comments will neither be communicated to the admission committee nor taken into account when assessing your application so if you have any comments you type them in here otherwise you click on this uh, validate here or you can just save and then sign out and then come back later but when you click validate then it says once you have clicked on the validation button below you will no longer be able to modify content on your application so this is the last part here so you click on validate and then after validation then you go to proceed to payment because remember you have to make a payment of 1000 swiss 150 swiss francs you pay for that and then your application is complete so that is it for this uh, application we wish you luck and if you have any questions please leave them below all the links we said we will leave them in the video description Thank you and have a nice day.